Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I'm wicked excited to be here because we're going to be talking about a topic that I just love. So here's what I think I'm going to call this sucker. My spiritual team ass kickers. <laughs> so we're going to be diving into the ass kickers that are on my spiritual team, why I think they're important, why I encourage people to have at least one on their spiritual team, and what the power and the benefit of their presence does for us. So first things first, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, about a spiritual team, then you have obviously not downloaded my freebie my little gift to you. And it's a downloadable PDF called building how to, you know, building and meeting your spiritual team. And you just go to karenkenney.com slash freebie. And remember it's K E N N E Y karenkenney.com slash freebie. And uh, get that sucker and read it and check it out. But really what your spiritual team is, it's, it's a name that I kind of came up with to describe what I consider the divine uh, help is in your life. They might be animals and people that are still alive. They might be animals and people that have already passed your ancestors, mythological people, you know, um, like Mr. Ro like I look over here uh, across the room. You guys can't see it, but I have a couple of bookshelves and on top of them, I have pictures of, so like my mom, obviously on my spiritual team, Marion Williamson, obviously on my spiritual team, Oprah's over there, uh, St. Francis of Assisi, right? Uh, Sekhmet, the lion headed goddess, Mr. Rogers. Oh my God. Right. So there's all these figures you can see in the background, right? You got over here, you know, Ganesh, I'm pointing to uh, a Murti, a statue of Ganesh behind me. You also see a figurine kind of of uh, mother Mary. And there's also, uh, I'm pointing at Joan of Arc right here. So I have a really eclectic, I'm a spiritual mutt. So I draw upon a lot of different, um, help is from different traditions. I like that I don't just stick to one particular thing. Uh, so it's a cast of characters that put me in touch with who I really am, that remind me of what I'm capable of, remind me, um, you know, what my purpose is, to whom I belong. And they help me to, they, they kind of a, a, a embodied example of like my, my values, my core values. And so when I'm trying to make my way through the world, and I feel like I need help and support. Yes, I can call upon, you know, uh, spirit. Some people call it Holy Spirit. Some people call it intuition in a teacher, gut instinct, whatever. We all have different names to describe one thing, right? And I think that's beautiful. I like that we have the ocean refuses no river, as they say, right? So I think of spiritual team as uh, my divine help is. So on my spiritual team, I have what I call a couple of characters that are the ass kickers. Now, not everybody is going to feel like they want that on their spiritual team, but I do not take a really like pious or holier than thou approach to God or the divine or source or my spirituality or my personal growth work. Uh, I allow all aspects of myself to be here. And we all each will, we, here's why I always say it's wicked important to know yourself because we will all be inspired by different people, different things, different tones, different approaches. So I think it's wicked important that we find out who, how, what, right, works for us. So for me, I'm gonna to touch on this in a couple of different ways. I'll introduce you to a couple of the ass kickers on my team, you know, why I love them and stuff like that. But they also, what, what I wanna say about this, about these kind of external things, right? When you're looking at Quan Yin over there, who is the goddess of compassion and mercy, she reminds me to not be so hot on myself and others, right? So what I often say about our spiritual team members is what they're doing for us is they are representing qualities, character, values, ways of being in the world or in mythology or in books or whatever that um, either are displaying things that we've forgotten that we also have within us, or maybe showing us things about ourselves that we didn't even know that we could be capable of or that we could do. So I got this piece of lint on me, so distracting. So I just feel like um, I have some really compassionate and kind, I mean, think about Mr. Rogers, right? Mr. Rogers taught little kids all over the world. 
that we were loved and liked just the way that we were. He had a very soft spoken tone of voice. He was very kind and compassionate and gentle and merciful. And I love having that aspect on my spiritual team. And then we also have people like this. So if you're not watching the show, <laughs> what you cannot see is that I'm holding up a book called Can't Hurt Me by a guy named David Goggins. So uh, the little subtitle here, it says, Master Your Mind and Defy the Odds, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. So David Goggins is a formidable character. He is legit, no joke, probably one of the most mentally tough people on the planet. And you can see on this book cover, right? Um, there's a, a pot, there's like almost like a transparent picture of him back when he was like 297 pounds. And then you see him uh, like 106 pounds or whatever lighter wearing his Navy SEAL or Marine uniform, all white with all his medals and stuff like that. And so you can basically, this cover is pretty, is pretty badass, right? And you're seeing who he was who he became. And this is a really good point about spiritual teams is like, as, as I was just saying, is they're reminding us what, what's possible within us, who we are, who we can be, not just who we can become, but, but what really actually lives within us. They're like this reminder. Okay. So the reasons why I'm showing you him first. So David Goggins is kind of like the number one ass kicker on my spiritual team. And I use him a lot especially when I find myself bumping up against discomfort that is physical. When I'm working out, when I'm running, when I'm at the gym, when I'm having to get up early, like just things that really take me out of my physical comfort zone, I rely on his wisdom. So I've already read this book once. I'm rereading it right now in my life. I pulled it back out because I, so I have the hardcover. I got it. It's like as soon as this sucker dropped because I, I he had been on my my radar for a really long time because he has an interesting story. You knew you would, were going to have a whole podcast episode without a story. So in 2008, and the reason why I want to tell you this is because it, it combines two of my ass kickers. Okay. So Sean Snow, one of my beloved friends, uh, I call him S2. And if you haven't listened to that episode yet, it's called Creating Possibility or creating opportunity with, with Sean and Steph Snow. It was just a few episodes ago. Uh, so in 2008, uh, Sean Snow, who has been in the uh, Kona World Championships for Ironman triathlons, he's been in them five times. In 2008, he qualified for Worlds in Kona, Hawaii. And I wanted to go and support him. So for my 40th birthday, my sweetie gifted me like my plane ticket to Kona. And it was so amazing. So I got to go to Hawaii and cheer on my friend as he was about to do this incredible thing. I had never been to Hawaii before. I'd, I'd always, I mean, I'd been to a ton of triathlons at that point, um, but I not participated in them, but cheerleading, supporting as the yoga teacher of a lot of, of these triathletes, et cetera. Um, I was always there in a support position, but I was so excited to go and watch my friend uh, do this incredible feat. So while we're at the starting, starting line, so here's the thing, you have to get up at like the crack acid dawn. So we're up at like three o'clock in the morning to go down to the start line. So there's all this prep that you have to do, right? You, you, they're getting their, like all their gear, they put, they get their gear kind of set up the day before. So their bikes are in the transition spot, you know, all, their little bags of like change of clothes and all those things. But there's a lot of other prep that happens before the gun goes off, right? Early in the morning. So 2008, there we are down by the water as these guys were about to do like a 2.6 mile swim. And all of a sudden we hear some planes overhead, like some aircraft carriers overhead. So we're down at the starting line. There's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. There's all some of the most fit people in the world standing down in the water as they're about to be released into waves to start their swim, uh, the, the, the swim leg, right? So basically you swim and then you run, ride your bike and then you run a marathon at the end. It's insane. It's like, it's, it's so crazy. So as we're waiting for, for Sean's wave, S2's wave to like go into the water, we have these planes overhead. And all of a sudden we see these guys jumping out of a plane, paratrooping down like big parachutes into the water. 
they get picked up a boat, they get brought to shore. And these guys only had like four or five minutes or whatever to change their gear and get ready for the race. Okay. One of those guys is David Goggins. Now he had already been on my radar and I was fascinated by him. And I actually caught a picture of him. I should have pulled it up on my phone ahead of time, but I grabbed a picture of him uh, at the end of the race. And I was just like, oh my God, this is Goggins, right? This is before he was wicked famous. Now he's super duper famous for, for it, uh, across many platforms for, um, he's always on podcasts. He's always doing all kinds of things. He's an incredible, uh, incredible story and incredible athlete. Again, this is, this is my guy. So the thing about Goggins is he is like, so many people do parodies of him because there's David Goggins, the man, and then there's Goggins and Goggins is like this part of him that is relentless in the pursuit of what I would call excellence. He is, he, he is always mining himself to, and asking himself the hard questions. He might not call himself like a spiritual badass, but when I, when I'm rereading this book and I'm hearing about all the feats of physical endurance, mental endurance, the racism he had to go through, the, the, the brutal trauma in childhood that he had to go through and the way his character act is like next level. He's a fascinating human being. So, but he also doesn't allow you to wimp out on yourself. And what he'll say is when the mind and the body first start to get to that place of thinking, I need to quit, I can't keep going. He calls that, I think the 40% rule. He's like, you're only really at 40% capacity. So he was constantly mining himself and digging deeper and digging deeper. And I don't wanna give it all away. I will just tell you this. If you need some inspiration, right? Pick up this book, Can't Hurt Me. I'm rereading it right now. Because I said to my friends the other day when I was hanging out with them, I said, you know what? Something occurred to me recently. And I said, I've gotten a little too fucking soft. I'm like, I've gotten a little too fucking soft. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I mean by that. So here's the thing in this line of work that I do as a spiritual mentor. So much of this work, right? We need to show up with compassion. We need to show up with tenderness and gentleness and mercy, especially towards ourselves, right? Those of us who go out into the world and try to help others, we have to do our own work first too. You know what I mean? So for, for my, a lot of my life, right? I had my dukes up. I had this kind of tough exterior. We, we talk about her, that part of me, right? We call her Vicky with two Ks from Lawrence. So dukes up, tough, whatever. So I've had to do a lot of work over the years to not like really just dismantle her. I'm not trying to kill off that part of me. I actually r rather like that part of me, but I really had to work on kind of softening that edge, polishing that off, getting rid of that chip, right? Kind of getting rid of that like attitude uh, because it's not always <laughs> super duper helpful, especially when it comes to having relationships with other people and communicating and not, I mean, that's why I would say hashtag evolved and evolving mass hole, right? So that part of me uh, that kept me alive and helped me to survive for a wicked long time, that tough part of myself, I always say there's a difference between being tough and being strong. And so as I started to build up more uh, strong internal stabilizers, a stronger sense of self and self-worth and self-identity and self-love and self-esteem, I could let go of some of that, you know, that toughness, that whatever. But I've been kind of looking at, um, you know, over like the pandemic time and over the past few years, especially there's a part of me and I just felt like, you know, I've let myself get a little too fucking soft. And one of the jokes that I was telling is I'm like, somebody could be doing something awful to me. And I'd be like, I'd be like, what happened to you in your childhood? I'm like, no, fight back, right? Like speak up, like do something. So I just kind of came to a place where I'm like, yeah, I'm not being anybody's like fucking punching bag anymore. People who have like, if you've got like your emotional shit, like deal with it, whatever, like just kind of laughing about in a lot of ways, right? So I like to hold myself to a standard of kind of excellence as much as I can. I do not always meet it, P.S., very human, uh, very imperfect. Again, hashtag always a work in progress. But I remember even um, back in high school, back in high school, I had a poster. I had a bunch of 
like my walls were covered. You could not see wallpaper anywhere in my room. Like it was all, I shouldn't say anywhere. That's an exaggeration, but it was like 90% covered with, with all the different kinds of people and artists, everything from musicians to athletes to whatever, who, uh, I think I even had a picture of Stephen King on my wall, uh, somewhere, but, um, you know, creatives, people who like lit me up. And I had a whole section on my wall. I had a Ricky Henderson poster for sure. I had a Howie Long poster for sure. Um, so I was, you know, I had a lot of stuff with the, um, used to be the Oakland Raiders and the LA Raiders. And the guy that used to own them was a guy named Al Davis. And I had, used to have this picture of Al Davis. And I think his hands were like in front of his face. Like he was like making steeple fingers or something like this. And you could see championship rings on his hands. Um, I'm going to have to see if I can find that old 1985, 1986 uh, magazine. I cut out this like pictures of them, but it was like all these, it was like Marcus Allen and Howie Long and like all these guys. And, um, you know, I've read a book, like, I think it was, um, I think the name of it was they call me assassin and it was about one of the guys that was on uh the oakland raiders but al davis had this saying about um commitment to excellence and even back then those kinds of people like people who really held themselves to a standard of not somebody else's idea of excellence but their own excellence i've always been inspired by that i've always been kind of inspired by people who can do things personally on some level that I know I can't do, right? Like people who like, and that's one of the things too, I, I have no desire. I don't feel compelled or driven to, um, you know, hike up, you know, uh, Kathmandu or, you know, to, 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 to climb Mount Everest or to do really extreme sports. Like that, that's not what calls me. I've always kind of felt like my ass kickery where I have a lot of strength is in the realm of the emotional and the mental when it comes to um, trauma and suffering and being able to navigate the internal world. But here's why I'm telling you all of this. So lately I've returned. So in the warmer months of the year, so um, I love to run outside. I am not a natural runner. I would say that I always say I was born to like pick things up and, and put them down. I'm more, I always say I have more of like short bursts of strength and energy than long distance things. I know that we can train our bodies. I'm not saying that I couldn't ever do it. The longest I've ever run is eight miles. Um, but when I'm first getting kind of back into the, to the summer season of running, I get my ass kicked a lot. And where I live, near where I live, there's a road that a lot of people who are training for triathlons or marathons or running or whatever, they train on this street right next to my, my house. And uh, that's the road that I often will start to test if I'm getting stronger in my cardiovascular, my ability to hang on. But the reason why David Goggins is a part of this conversation is when I start to suck wind, when I start to suck wind in a physical pursuit, lifting weights, running on the bike, like whatever the thing might be. I do what I call, I have to Goggins myself. So, you know, my sweetie will say to me, cause sometimes we run separate routes, separate routes, right? And he'll say, how'd it go today out there? And I'll say, oh, it was tough. I had to Goggins myself like four times. <laughs> so what I do by having Goggins on my spiritual team he reminds me that I'm stronger than I give myself credit for. He reminds me that when I think I want to quit, I'm probably at about my true 40%. So he helps me to kind of push through. He helps me to keep going. He helps me to not give up on myself. And I literally will hear him in my head. So he's famous for saying this line where he goes, stay hard, stay hard. He's saying hard, H-A-R-D, right? Hard. And so in my head, as I'm running up this hill, I'll be like, stay hard, stay hard, right? And like, I'll be talking to myself as if Goggins was talking to me in my head. And I do the same thing with the other ass kickers on my team. So also on my spiritual team. And what's so fascinating is I've done podcast episodes with all of these guys. So Andre Norman right here, right? Ambassador of Hope. This is his book. He's called the Ambassador of Hope. He's like from, from the prison yard to Harvard yard. So if you haven't listened to my episode with, um, with Andre, check this sucker out too. So Andre is also um, a powerful story of overcoming his beginnings, 
right? And in his whole thing about when he was in prison and he realized he had this moment of realization that he had become the king of nowhere, the king of nowhere and the king of nothing, even though in the prison system, he was like really revered, like revered. He was like the king of the prison system. And he's like, yeah, but I'd become the king of nowhere. And his journey, kid from Boston, like where he came from and what he overcame. When I start to feel like this is too hot or I don't know if I can do it. First and foremost, let me also speak up for myself in that I have become also my own spiritual team member, my own, for lack of a better word, hero, my own example. Because all I have to do is look back at my own life and I'll sometimes be running, right? I'll be running up a hill and I'll think of my mom and I'll think of the circumstances of her death and I'll think of everything that, that I had to overcome to become, to be the person that I am today who is still growing and is still being and becoming, right? And sometimes I'll say things to myself like, you've been through hotter shit than this. You can do this. And I just put my head down. I lock my eyes. I focus and I just drive and I drive. And then I'll hear my sweetie in my head saying, lean into the hill, lean into the hill, right? So I pull upon all the people in my life who inspire me, but not all the people in my life who inspire me are the ass kickers, okay? So when I'm really struggling to complete something, especially physically, that's when I really call upon David Goggins, Andre Norman, Sean Snow. Sean Snow, who I've been watching defy the odds. I keep saying to him, how is it that you're getting older and stronger and faster? It's like unbelievable what he's been able to accomplish as a triathlete, right? As, as a just... Man, it's like, I, I can't, like, I just, I sometimes just laugh when I talk about these people and the things that they've accomplished because they're otherworldly. And then the other ass kicker on my team, I also did a podcast with, and that's Walter Norton Jr. Uh, I had Walter, Walter, old dear friend of mine, uh, incredible strength and conditioning coach. And his motto is hashtag let's get better. So in my head, when I want to quit, I'll say, you want to get better. Let's get better. Let's go. Let's get better. Right. And I'll hear him in my head doing his one minute mojos and like all this stuff. And I think it's important that we all have these kinds of beings, examples on your spiritual team in your life, because here's the reality. Life is fucking hard sometimes. If we look at the state of the world right now. If we look at all the injustices, all the death, all the violence, all the rights being taken away, we, I mean, we could break them all down. We don't have time. We don't have time today to break down how there's so much insanity that is happening in the world right now. And there's a lot of big feelings and there's a lot of big, right, uh, emotions and there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of despair and there's a lot of uh, rage. There's a lot of injustice. There's just a lot. And if we don't have within ourselves the capacity to navigate these things, it's why I have, pointing again, Joan of Arc up on my wall behind me. I spent a lot of time on my computer. I spent a lot of time on video calls. And it's no mistaking that I can look right up, just lift my eyeballs and look right up and see her. And she's there wearing her armor, holding her sword. And what it says is, I am not afraid. I was born to do this. Joan of Arc one of my ass kickers, right? And I talk to her when I'm out on my run and I just feel like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. I'll be like, you know, do not be afraid. You were born to do this. When, when I, I'm about to go out and speak on stage and my heart is racing and I have to run to the bathroom, right? And I'm like starting to get like a little worked up. I, I call upon my ancestors, my female ancestors, my mother, all the women that came before me, I call upon Joan of Arc, I call upon Mary Magdalene, I call upon, right? And, I, and, I, and I, I say to myself, you are not out here alone. I call upon the strength and the wisdom that has come before me. I also, right, when, when uh, uh, what not, only, not only Joan of Arc, right? Like I said, I wanna circle back to this. I call upon the younger versions of myself. I let Vicky with two Ks from Lawrence start to talk to me in my head. Because when the world feels like it's turning into a shit show in a lot of ways, if we do not have spiritual tools within ourselves, if we do not have strong character, if we do not have a strong sense of self, if, like I, I always say to myself, you have survived worse things than this. 
and not only survive, you have come to thrive. And there's another, another, um, Vic how do I say this? Adjacent, I would say like adjacent ass kicker, although she's more than that. But there's a, a brilliant author and teacher and wise woman named uh, Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes. She wrote a book called Women Who Run With the Wolves. I'll never forget reading that when I was a young woman and how much, what an effect that book had on me. Women Who Run With the Wolves. It's actually over here. Yeah, I can spot it right there on my shelf, but I don't want to get up and go pull it. Uh, Women Who Run With the Wolves. And um, she, Clarissa Pingola Estes has also written this piece. I always say, this is a piece that gives me peace. This is a piece that gives me inner peace. And it's a piece called, we were made for these times. So right now is all the stuff like Roe v. Wade and like human trafficking. Like I just saw a story today, like on human trafficking that I just want to like rip my eyeballs out of my head because I just cannot believe <sighs> That's not true. I can believe the capacity for human cruelty um, and just, um, all right, and we're back. I have to see, I have to bring myself back or I'm going to go off on a tangent on all the things that I see in the world that make me, that make me want to uh, just uh, have a moment. Okay. So here's the thing though. I'm of no use if I'm caught up like in my rage, right? If I am not able to take this energy and channel it. So one of the things that I remind myself is when people come to me and they feel like they're in despair or they're in overwhelm and they're like, whatever, of course we listen. I listen deeply and generously. I, um, I um, validate what I'm hearing them say. And then I also, after, after we do all of that though, you know, and on and on, there's more to it, of course. Then I remind them, if we're here alive on this planet right now, there is a reason why we are here. And one of the things that I always say, I don't speak for them, but I say, I believe that my whole life has been preparing me for this moment. Everything that I went through as a kid, everything that I went through in my teenage years, in my 20s, in my 30s, in my 40s, it's all been every experience, every heartbreak, every every fuck up, every time I fell down and got up, every time I let somebody down and felt the guilt and the shit, like every experience that I've had, has been leading me to this moment. And I always say this, I was made for these times. I was made for this because I can hold this. I have a strong inner center, right? It goes back to, right? And I, and I think about guys like Goggins and I think about like people that I know who have overcome and survived, like things that would seem insurmountable. And the one thing that I, I often say is like, I'm the kind of person that will try to make a way where there is no way. I say this about women too. I'm like, women are the way makers. We will find a way. We will make a way where there is no way. When we are passionate, when we are focused, when we are uh, calling upon the divine intelligence that is available to us, our highest selves. What did, what did, what did um, 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 Lincoln call them? What? I think the angels of our better nature. When we're tapping into that, and this is for me what my spiritual team ass kickers remind me of. They remind me of who I really am, what I'm made of, to whom I belong, and what I've been able to overcome in the past, right? I keep looking over too. If you're watching, you can see over there, I'm pointing to it, this little sword that's sitting on this, uh, what would you call that thing? Uh, uh, no, uh, what do they call those things? <laughs> Hassock? Wait, were they hassocks when I was a kid? Ooh, right, little step stool thing. I don't know, whatever that is. I know the name of it. Like I can see it in my head. The thing you put your feet on when you're sitting on a chair. Um, that thing. Ottoman. The Ottoman over there. I keep that little sword there because it reminds me. I look up at at, at I look up right at uh, at Joan of Arc and it reminds me. And it also reminds me. I've told this story before, but the gates to the cemetery where my mother and many of my other <coughs> family members are buried, right? They're these beautiful brass, are they brass? You know, the patina, they get that, you know, I, yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that they're solid, solid brass gates. They're gorgeous. And they have these two female guardian angels on them, like with the wings, right? These these angel wings, and they're both holding both lilies, flowers, right? Gentleness, right? 
And they're also both standing there like this. So I'm stacking my fists on top of each other like I'm holding a sword. Oh, I could just demonstrate it. Let me get my sword real quick, right? So they're standing there like this, right? With their swords like right in front of them. And it's so powerful because what it says on one of the gates is, until, and it comes from an old poem, right? Uh, I did a lot of research on these gates because I was fascinated by them. So I learned all these things, but it comes from this old poem. But on one side of the gate, it says, um, until the darkness fades. And then on the other one, it says, and the shadows flee away. Basically what it's saying is we are here to guard these souls. Like we are here to guard the gates of the cemetery and all who are here until the darkness fades. I'm almost positive. And, and, and until the darkness fades. Yeah. In the, in the, in the, um, and, and, you know, in, in, you know, they flee away, shadows flee away. And I think about this sometimes too, when I'm running is that there's parts of us within us, right? That we are going to have to overcome. It's not the external world that is just the thing that we're bumping up against and battling with and fighting against and pushing back against and trying to seek, you know, justice and honor and fairness and equity and inclusion and all diversity and all the things that matter. There's also parts of ourselves within us that we have to fight. We have to fight our own bias. We have to fight our own prejudice. We have to fight our own weakness. We have to push back against our own laziness and our own contempt and our own judgment and our own attack. The greatest battle we're ever going to fight is within us. It's within our own minds. That, that, is, just, that is just it. The, the, the greatest enemy, the greatest... Um, adversary, what's the thing, your greatest, uh, I don't know, if I, competition, right? That's not the right word, but your competitor, the person that you're really, you know, trying to overcome is you. The way that you think, your old thought patterns, your old beliefs, your old stories, your own identity. So to have somebody on your spiritual team, um, you know, and sometimes I think, oh, you know, I think Matthew McConaughey, I think he's the one when they once asked him, you know, who's your hero? Um, and he said, me five years from now or something like that. And that's what I think about is that, that there's a part of me that is so much wiser than my knucklehead thoughts, <laughs> than my conditioned behaviors and my conditioned thoughts. And so I want to, I hope this is landing for you guys in some way and that it inspires you to think about who are, and if you don't want to call them ass kickers, if that seems too harsh, or if you, if you, you watch some of Goggins videos and you're like, he swears too much and he's too hardcore, whatever. He doesn't have to be your guy. You can find your own version of what I would call the ass kickers on your spiritual team. But these are the ones who inspire you to not give up on yourself, to not give up on who you are truly, uh, your dreams, your goals, your vision, why you're here on the planet, your ministry, your mission, right? What you're meant to do, your calling. Because sometimes these things that we want to create and we want to do to, to help make ourselves and the world better, to make the world a better place, to make a difference, we have to do some wicked hard work before we get there, before we get to the reward, before we get to that result or outcome. So when I'm working with people, you know, there's a, there's a great old quote. I think it's Joe Lewis, the fighter. I think it was Joe Lewis, the boxer who said this. He said, um, I can teach you, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I can teach you every, every like skill that I have. I can teach you, I can teach you how to bob and weave and all the boxing exercises. Like I can teach you all of that, how to jab, how to punch, how to box, but I can't teach you how to be a fighter. That has to come from within you. That has to come from within you. And so this is what the ass kickers on my spiritual team remind me of. They remind me of my own grit. They remind me of my own resiliency. They remind me of my own tenacity. They remind me of my own strength. They remind me a little bit of my own stubbornness, right? They remind me of what I call haughtiness. I'm making a little hot, right? There's this haughtiness that we have. Because when, you know, they say, when, that, that old saying, when, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? And so we could also say the strong get going. There's another way to look at this. Because I'm not talking about that false bravado. I'm talking about tapping into something within you 
that you didn't even know that you were capable of. That is always there, that is already there, that we all have access to. But it might require us to get a little uncomfy, a little uncomfortable. And it's interesting, right? Because I'm actually a person where comfort is comfort is is one of my values in it. Not one of my values. I wouldn't say it's one of my, I mean, I guess I can kind of say it's one of my values, but I like comfort. I like fuzzy blankets. I like to be warm. I like to have the things that I like around me, right? But I'm also the kid that's like, man, we get a lot of work ahead of ourselves. Let's not put it, like, let's do it. Let's just go and get it done. Yeah, it's hard work, but the, the, like less bitching and more like doing the work, right? So I kind of I, I kind of have both of these sides of myself. And so I'm not afraid of a little hard work. Can't be a blue collar kid really and be afraid of some hard work, right? So there's a part of me that kind of thrives in that too. And then there's a part of me that likes at the end of the day to have clean sheets and a nice warm bed and some water to drink and, and be able to take a hot shower. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just, so I hope I'm making sense of what I'm saying here, right? I'm not saying we have to be, oh, you, you don't have to be like Goggins level all the time. That's not reality for me. I don't want to live in that zone. I don't want to live in that pain zone. That's not that interesting to me. But I do want to know that, you know, somebody once said about me, this always makes me laugh. They described me as a tender cut of tough, a tender cut of tough. And I said to them, what do you mean by that? And they said, you might be one of the most loving and compassionate people that I know, but I still want you on my side in a fucking rock fight, right? And so I just started laughing and that kind of sums it up. So I don't want to get too soft because life requires us sometimes, not saying to be had to each other, but to be able to overcome had circumstances, to be able to navigate when, 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 when things get had, when there are things that you're just like, I cannot believe this is happening, right? When you're dealing with, um, when you're dealing with things that are just really challenging emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. We want to be able to tap in to something within ourselves. And sometimes we forget, we forget what's within us. We forget what we have access to. And so I always say, what good external teachers are always doing, me as an external mentor, as a spiritual mentor, me as an external coach, right? Me as an external teacher, what, what, what we're always doing, if we're any good at our jobs, is we're pointing back to your internal teacher, your internal strength, your internal uh, inner teacher, your internal spiritual team, right? The thing within you, the spirit within you, whatever you want to call that, we're always pointing back to it because that's what's going to get you through things at the end of the day. It's nice to have, you know, the best motivational speeches of all time on, on, on YouTube or whatever, reading books and things that inspire you. It's great to have these external examples, but what they're really designed to do it's exactly like these statues that you see behind me, right? Lakshmi over there and Ganesh. What these murtis, with these statues, these deities, the, uh, what are, they're reminding you of is the qualities that they have that they're reflecting back to you to remind you that you also have within you. This is what a good spiritual team does. So add one to your team or don't. You're adults, you have agency, autonomy, and authority. But I will say that I have found it so valuable in my own life to pull up when I need to shift into that next gear, when I need to dig down deep mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. It's great to have, it's great to have the, the spiritual team ass kicker that you can rely on, that you can go to, that you can hear their voice in your head. And it's kind of like something that kind of just reminds you of who you are and what you're capable of. And so we kind of, um, it's like an exchange of energy. You know what I mean? Where we uh, ride off the wave. We're, I always say we're standing on their shoulders and they're, they're showing us what's possible. And to me, like when you step into the realm of possibility, that's where the magic and the miracles are. So this is also just kind of a little love shout out 
uh, to all of these people who have inspired me. And there's many more, there's many more. Um, these are the ones that just kind of really make me think about when I'm grinding down in a physical way. These are the people that I call upon, but I call upon my sweetie and I call upon my mom and I call upon my pets that, you know, Abby, who used to run with me all the time. And, you know, and I think about like how happy I'm like, oh, this hill is killing me right now, but Abby would love this, you know? So there's a lot of different ways that we get motivated. And I'm not saying my way has to be your way, right? You get to create your own world. If you didn't listen to that episode, go check it out, right? We get to create our own world and we get to create our own spiritual team. But it doesn't have to look all pious and holy and like, you know, like namaste hands. We can have some grit and some kick ass and some toughness and some tenacity uh, on our teams as well. For me, it's been a game changer and a life changer. So I hope this helps you in some way. And I would love to hear, I would love to hear who you add, who is the ass kicker on your spiritual team? I didn't name all of mine. But Goggins is my main one. Like when I say I Goggins myself today, that means like there was some chatter going on in my head and I just pull, I just pull his voice into my mind. And then I kind of like turn up the volume and it helps me to keep going. So I would love to hear who is on your spiritual team, who the ass kicker is. Again, if you haven't gotten my freebie, right, go grab that sucker, karenkenney.com slash freebie. It's about how to meet and build your own spiritual team. All right, you guys, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I know it's tough out there right now. I know there's a lot of stuff going on and you might be on either side of things. You know, I can only speak for myself. I believe that women, you know, should be able to choose what to do with their own bodies. I am a strong believer in that. Um, and so look at we're going to be challenged in life. There's going to be shit that goes down that we don't agree with, we don't approve of, we don't like, we don't support. And so we're going to have to dig deep, dig deep and find some things within ourselves that help us to move forward. And one of the other reasons why I was talking about ass kickers and stuff today, why I think it's important is there's a, there's a quote, um, that Ram Das says, and I can't remember it exactly, but the beautiful teacher Ram Das has a quote. I don't think I have it here on my desktop. I was just looking really quick to see if I have it and I don't. But it's something along the lines of this, is that I want to be able to, it's not the word is in control, but you know how Ashwaran talks about, you've heard me talk about this before, having internal stabilizers within us. So my whole thing is this, when I show up to a difficult situation, which right now the world is in a difficult situation, and then I remember, hey, I was made to do this. I was made for these times. So what that means for me is I don't wanna show up and add to the shit show. I don't wanna show up with my shit and just add to the shit show. I wanna be able to show up and be helpful in the situation. I wanna be able to show up and be reason, have the ability to reason with a clear mind, with clarity and intention of what I wanna do when I get there. I don't wanna show up to a fire, right? With more kindling and more friggin' gasoline, right? I wanna be able to show up and be um, an asset to be able to, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? what I always say at the end of the show, right? Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. That doesn't mean this, this, um, how do I say this? I think so often when we think about spirituality and stuff like that, we think of calm and compassionate and loving and kind. And yes, yes, yes. And more yes. And sometimes love is fierce. And sometimes we show up with a little more fire but not so much that we burn the whole thing down in a way that's not actually helpful for the people you're trying to help. That's the point I'm trying to make is we gotta be able to kind of rely on something within ourselves that is strong and steady and stable so that we're not burning down even the ones we're trying to help. That's what I'm trying to say. And if we don't have any control, right? If we don't have the ability to tap into something deeper so that when we feel anger, when we feel rage, we don't just let it run uncontrolled. I often say, I give my anger a job. I give my grief a job. 
And I learn how like through divine alchemy to kind of channel it into something that is actually going to be more helpful, is going to be hopefully be a blessing. So I'll end it right there. Wherever you go, may you leave the people, the place, the animals, the environment and yourself better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be an ass kicking blessing. <laughs> Bye. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.